Thank you. I'll say it again, I'm honored to be here at the Tyler Museum of Art. And um, I'd like to thank Caleb and Elena for their help in this. And um, thank all of you for coming to listen to me talk about my art and how I became an artist. Um, I have a degree in speech communications, no background in art, and the art part of my life began when I was 34 years old. My son was four years old, and my husband and I were on a vacation in Cambria, California, which is Central Coast. I'm from Southern California. And um, we were driving um, along the beach, and I looked over, and I saw some paintings that were in a gallery, and I said, Mike, stop the car. And he said, what? I said, stop the car. I want to go back and look at these paintings. And so we turned around. I looked at the paintings from the outside of the gallery, and I said, I've got to go in and see, see these paintings. And we went in, and when I saw the paintings close up, I said, this is what I can do. And it was like my whole body just knew that I wanted to paint. And so um, I was living in Minnesota at the time. And I, when we uh, came home from vacation, I <coughs> went to my son's paint box. You know those little paint boxes that are that big? And I sat in my living room and drew a picture of my living room and painted it with the paint box, beige sofa, white walls, you know, just what it was. And I thought, well, that's kind of boring. So I decided I'd turn my back on the living room and draw from my imagination and do it different colors um, that would be a little more lively. And it turned out to be that this is my second painting that I did in my life. And I thought, well, that's kind of cute. <laughs> so I decided that I would do a painting of a friend of mine's house. She was moving from a house that she loved in Edina, Minnesota to another house and she was sorry to leave. So I drew a little, did a little drawing about this big, maybe five inches by five inches, and then painted it with the paint box. And um, it turned out kind of cute. So I thought, well, I'll go get it framed for her. And I took it to a gallery in Edina, that also is a frame shop. And I said, I'd like this framed. You can just put it between two pieces of plexiglass. It's for a friend of mine. And the gal who was helping me said, oh my gosh, this is great. Who did this painting? And she said, come here, everybody. Come look at this painting. And here's this tiny little painting on the table. And I said, well, that's mine. And she said, you're kidding. She said, we'd like to carry your body of work. <laughs> 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 and I'm going, well, this is my third painting. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I um, uh, started doing some paintings for her to sell in the gallery. And then we moved to, from Edina, after being there for a couple years, we moved to Fort Worth, back to Fort Worth. And um, I kept wanting to paint. And so when my son um, was still four years old, I 
would have a babysitter come and take care of him and set up a little cardboard table in a bedroom and did a little painting during that time. And I was still painting from my imagination. I did a series of paintings about memories from childhood and just to kind of put them down, get them down. This is a memory about my grandmother. She, um, I went to visit her when I was in college and she told me about when my dad's father died. My dad's father died when he was seven and his brother was 11 and his sister was five and left my grandma with three small children. And so she was very angry with God. And she told me that she was crying on her bed one day and a raven came and sat on her windowsill and told her not to be angry anymore. And that, that changed her life. So <coughs> on the rug, I put um, the car accident on the outer ring, the small children on the center ring, and then looks like some crosses, maybe some religious thing on the inside circle. And then on the dresser is the um, image of the, her husband that's kind of ghostly. <coughs> So um, I don't paint so much from my imagination that way, but I use a lot of imagination. Um, my paintings start with drawings now and just simple line drawings. Normally with the simple line drawings, I don't uh, color them, but in this show, they found a colored one. And that looks like it's with magic marker and probably some uh, colored pencil. This, this painting is of the owners of Valley House. It's their house. And what I like to do with um, the interiors and with landscapes is take what is there but also kind of move things around and so for example this um, little goat that's in the front normally isn't sitting there in their house there and the sculpture isn't quite hanging over their sofas and I, I like to just kind of move things around and put things the way that uh, I think they're neat. There's a black kind of cylinder sitting on that uh, coffee table in the center. That's a <coughs> lingam. It's a stone that has a lot of really good energy that uh, travels down a river from Tibet down into I don't know where, what city it lands in. And then <coughs> right above that cylinder is a pillow, but I put a painting that I thought was really neat that is in their house on the pillow, and it turns out that that was uh, Donald Vogel, the man who founded Valley House. Kevin did that painting and that was his favorite painting that uh, Kevin did. This is another interior of some friends of the Vogels. And when I was at this, uh, Ron, Ron and Paula Tyler, Ron Tyler used to be the director at the Amon Carter, and now he does a lot of writing, publishes books and all. Well, one of his books is on the piano, and when I was walking around in this area, I opened up the curtain to look outside to see what kind of shrubbery they have. And it's a fence, like a stockade fence. 
So I put one of Donald Vogel's paintings um, in the window rather than a stockade fence. They're print collectors. So those are some of the prints that they collect. This is actually my house, and the walls aren't pink. I'd like to repaint them pink. My, my <laughs> husband's here, so, <laughs> so let's do that, paint them pink. <laughs> we um, used to have pugs. We don't have any dogs anymore. But this is um, the house, that painting that's up there on the upper left side is not really at the house. But I saw that painting in a book one day and put that there. And um, <coughs> so the colors aren't exactly the way they should be. The chairs have, they're just um, cream color rather than the purple. So I just um, embellish. And this is a f another person's house that the um, inside is a little bit different than they normally would be. <coughs> the bobcat that's outside is actually a bobcat that their son shot and now it's stuffed inside the house, looking that way. <laughs> and then the, the uh, outside is actually Nova Scotia. This is actually, the house is in Albany. The scenery outside is Nova Scotia because they have a, a relative who does some drawings and that's one of the relative's drawings outside instead of what's really out there. And this painting is also embellished. It's not quite what's there. The, I guess, chest on the left is in another room of the house. And the dog is no longer with us, but it's a dog from the past. And there was that little white, here I'll use the laser pointer, that little guy right there. Um, I was looking through a magazine, I needed something to put in that spot, and I was looking through a magazine, thumbing through it, just to read it, and that little guy was in it. And so I put, I said, that is what needs to go there. Mm -hmm. So I put that there. When I was in Washington, D.C. one time, I went to the Corcoran Gallery at DuPont Square, and I saw a Bernard, Pierre Bernard painting and it was a naked girl brushing her hair. And I thought, well, that would be fun to put myself naked in a painting when there's a mirror. So this has a mirror right there, and there's me <laughs> naked. <laughs> and so whenever there's a mirror, I put myself naked in it uh, <laughs> with the back, because I'm too old for the front. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a time in um, Fort Worth when I helped put together a contemporary art center. That was back in 1998. And um, the Star-Telegram asked me, I was the person people would come to. So the Star-Telegram was doing a, a journalistic piece on the Clyburn competition that we have there every four years. It's a piano competition. And they asked me if I knew some artists who could do some work for each day, like 12 days of journalism uh, for the competition. 
And so I asked some friends, and they said, no, we don't want to do that. And I found some other people who did want to do it, and I thought, well, I'll go ahead and do something for the piece. And this is what I did. And because I wasn't painting a lot during that time, I was being more administrative, um, I used Rousseau and plunked a piano in the middle of it with a guy playing in a um, cheetah outfit. And this painting went on the cover of the first day of the competition and it said, let the music begin. And Laura and George Bush were the honorary chairs. And Laura saw this painting in the um, newspaper and <coughs> told her friend, Ken Blassingame, who's her designer, that she wanted to meet me and then she saw all the rest of the people, the days, and she had all of us come down with our paintings to the, um, it was when she was, they were governor, came, came down to the Capitol, and her office has a really nice hallway that is maybe as wide as this room, maybe a little bit smaller. And we hung our paintings up, and um, that's how I first met her. And um, I called her up after we'd, I'd gotten back to Fort Worth. Someone asked me if I would be in the, do a painting for the celebrity artist um, fundraising event for the American Diabetes Association. And I said, sure. And so I called Laura Bush and asked her if she would be my celebrity. And she said, sure. And so I went down to the governor's mansion and um, talked to her about what we might do. And she told me that the library is George Bush's favorite room. And she said, maybe we could use this as our Christmas card as the governor. She didn't want it too Christmassy. Why don't we just put a candy cane on the book? And so I put a candy cane on the book and plus I put one of her dogs on the book. And so this painting, the, the symbolism of it is the uh, candelabras are the twins and the fire is the family and the this candle is her, and of course that's George. <coughs> so this went out as their Christmas card in 1998. So I asked her if I could do some paintings of the governor's mansion, maybe 12 of them, and she said sure. So every month I went down to the um, governor's mansion and did some drawings. This is of the, I can't remember, this is the library, but you can see the drawing on the left, and then I came back to the studio and did this painting, and at the time I really liked playing with the uh, wood grain and making it kind of fiery and earthy. And that's uh, the bushes dancing at the inauguration. 
this is the conservatory. And the rug, do you see the little dog down there? That spot. And so I wanted to put him in, and I went around to look for spot. He was in the carriage house. And when I came to him, he was laying down sleeping. But then he got up and looked just like that. And I thought, well, that's perfect for that. So you see the pillows up there are Matisse cutouts. I like to use people who um, give me a lot of freedom in my paintings. Um, Matisse gives me freedom. I say, well, if he has crooked lines, I can have crooked lines. And um, this, the rug in the governor's mansion was designed by uh, Bill Clements, and it's the Six Flags of Texas, and it's a really pretty rug. So this is the state dining room. And when I was painting this painting, for some reason I started saying, how do you know? How do you know? And I said it real deeply, like, how do you know what to paint next, or what colors to paint, or I just wanted to know. And something said, the painting is already painted. And since then, I've heard, and I haven't really researched it, but there is a school of thought that things are already painted, music is already um, composed, and people, we humans, um, put it onto the canvas for people to see. And so that kind of gave me a little bit of freedom, too. It's not just me doing this, it's something else. So Mrs. Bush, um, <coughs> Mike and I, along with some other people at the governor's mansion, decorated the governor's mansion for about three years um, for Christmas. And we were there the year that um, Gore and Bush were running for president. And Mrs. Bush said, wouldn't it be nice if George wins the election, if all the people who decorate the governor's mansion for Christmas come to the White House to decorate for Christmas? And we're going, OK, that'll be fine. <laughs> so President Bush won. And we got invited up to decorate the White House for Christmas. And that was in 2001, um, two months after 9-11. And everything changed at the White House. Security got really tight. And <coughs> they had a lot of bomb-sniffing dogs. And the first day that we went to the White House, Sharon was there. And um, so for four years, I decorated the White House. And in 2004, I got a phone call and was asked to do a Christmas card for the White House. And so the image on the left is the Christmas card for the White House in 2004. And it was inspired by this painting um, that I probably did in 2003 of the Red Room in the White House. And you can kind of see the difference. This uh, lamp is taken away, and this cranberry tree is put there. Um, for the theme for this year, 2004, was music in the White House. And so Mrs. Bush just said, put a music stand. So we, I put the music stand and the cranberry tree. And 
here's another view of the Red Room in the White House. And this is a beer stat. I copied the Albert beer stat that was in the Red Room of the White House. And on this table right here, during Christmas, another cranberry tree goes on that. And they're about this tall, just full cranberries. So I like to paint interiors, and I also like painting landscapes. This is in Colorado, and I, for 17 years I went on a trip with another family and my family, and everybody went off um, fly fishing, and I don't like to fish. <coughs> so um, I would stay back and draw, and so this is a drawing from my time in Colorado. And this is a painting at our Botanic Gardens, similar to the drawings that I did. This is a door in my studio, and all these cutouts are from cutting something out to see if I like the idea of like a heron going in in a certain spot. And it helps me figure out, um, I just tape it up, and it helps me to see um, what will look good, what I think will look good, like the deer and butterflies and lampshades. And I do reuse them, and that's why I've uh, saved them on this door. These are some recent paintings, um, Longhorns. And this is actually um, our land. We have a ranch up in uh, the Panhandle, the Texas Panhandle. This ranch is, what, my 10 miles from where the fires were? The one with the fire got 10 miles away from the center ranch. Yeah, and um, this is south of all those fires that, that happened. And <coughs> the longhorns are really popular. I painted some a longhorn a couple years ago, and then people keep wanting longhorns, so I keep painting more longhorns. We don't have any longhorns on our property up there, but I put some in because people like longhorns so much. But they do have a lot of, we have a lot of turkey and um, painted buntings, cardinals, all kinds of things. I really like putting animals in the paintings. They're a lot of fun. And this is another painting of Wheeler, looking west, a Wheeler sunset. And um, they have quail up there. And um, blue, they don't have blue bonnets, I don't think. But I put them in. So um, there's a little saying that I like from Texas, from Archbishop Bishop Desmond Tutu. Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. And that's the closing of my talk today. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions for her? Yes. Uh, you didn't mention the used canvas. I haven't looked closely at your paintings. So all these that you've shown us, what was the, uh, was it paper, canvas, or what was the backing for the paint? 
the, some of them are canvas, um, some of them are panel. I really like painting on panel because my paintings have become real detailed, um, kind of real tight. You know, you'd think I'd get looser, but I got tighter. And um, that's panel. So it's real smooth, a real smooth surface. And um, my hand, probably 30 years ago, went numb, my right hand that I paint with. So I don't have a really nice light touch um, with this hand. It feels like I have a glove on. So I paint, um, let me see if I can find, oh, well, the grass on, on this, I paint the, the light color underneath and then paint a dark color on the top of that. And then I take a tool that you use in sculpting clay and make the grass blades. And I do that same thing with the um, wood grain and like the wood grain here. Anything that needs to be small, I do it with the that process that type of process. And even on the birds, I'll do their feathers this way rather than paint them. I put like a gray underneath and then paint the brown on top and then make the feathers and the gray pops through to be the feather. Yes. Are all the photos from, or the paintings from Austin, are they all together? the governor's mansion, or they all split up? Well, um, Ken Blassingame, who's been with uh, the Bushes forever, um, he really, I have 12, did 12 of them. And I s sent them to, I sent the images to <coughs> different museums, and they traveled around to five or six different museums in Texas, I sent the images here and you rejected me. It was before, it was before my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let the record reflect. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was re <laughs> Well, we have two. We have two. Yeah, yeah two of them. Um, what happened, so Ken wanted to keep them together because it it's a historical thing. No one else has done paintings, a series of paintings of the governor's mansion. And so um, Ken wanted to keep them together. And it's hard to sell 12 uh, big paintings. And people wanted one, they didn't want all of them. Maybe they wanted two. There was someone who's bought three of them, um, but it was too hard to keep them together. So um, they're not together. They were. But a catalog was made yes. of them documenting them together. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. So. Yeah. And all the museums who did do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have the catalog. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Do you use oil or acrylic? I use oil. I started out with acrylic, and um, a friend of mine, Dennis Blagg, uh, thought I might enjoy painting with oils. And so, Vernon Fisher one time told me I ought to paint in acrylics, but the, the things that I need to do, like with the grass, it needs to stay wet for three hours and for me to be able to make the blades of grass. So oil works a lot better for me. And um, trying to think if I use acrylic, for anything, no, I don't 
anymore use acrylic. What was your original paint box? Paint box, it was the, the little thing that you buy at the drugstore with just, you know, those little round things and you put water, it was watercolor. Yeah. But you don't do watercolor anymore? I've never, no. Um, I heard watercolor's really hard. <laughs> So I'm going, I don't think I want to try. <laughs> <laughs> yes? This seems to be the only painting that doesn't have a cute little dog in it. Is, is there, or am I just missing it, or is there a reason why? Gosh. Hmm. <laughs> well, we don't have dogs anymore, so maybe, hmm. yeah. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. The uh, Bush Museum on the SNU campus, I think at Christmas time, does a um, showing of a particular year's Christmas in the White House. Uh -huh. um, how much of that would you have been involved in? Or was it just a particular year or two? It's just one year, one year. that I was asked. and. Um, we actually go to the Bush Center now and decorate the Bush Center for Christmas, and they're doing a um, chronological of the Chris Christmases in the White House, and I think my Christmas card, my Christmas card was there um, the fourth year that the center was open. And it's going to be there again, I think maybe next year, might be coming back around. Okay. And then the Bush Center actually um, has some of my paintings there. I did a series of paintings of the White House. Mrs. Bush said I could do that. And I had about 12 of them. And then they all got uh, sold. Um, Mrs. Bush has one, um, the Bush Center has four up in their offices, and some other people have some of the, the paintings. And then the Bush Center also, I did two murals for Central Market, one in Fort Worth and one in Dallas. And the one in Dallas, uh, Stephen Butts uh, wanted to, he's the owner of Central Market, H-E-B. -E he wanted to donate it to the Bush Center or something that Laura Bush was interested in. I think he has a crush on her. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so we donated it to, um, he donate, donated it to the Bush Center and so I had, have an original um, mural at the Bush Center, and then we put made prints to go into the stores. Yes. <coughs> Do these depict your home? Only. Oh, right there beside you. Oh, yeah. only this one. Mm-hmm. In fact, it makes me, I haven't done an interior for a while. It makes me want to go back and do some more interiors. I say yes. Yeah. <laughs> After you paint the walls in your... Yes. <laughs> True. Well, thank you, Cindy. You're welcome. Thank you.